name is Lucas, this is Bit of Lit, and I want to talk about a book I have been reading and listening to, mostly listening to, and then I finished it through reading, uh, and that would be Shaggy Bane by Douglas Stewart, which is on the Booker Prize shortlist, uh, and I see why I have seen Sean the Book Maniac praise this book, giving it five stars. He's very particular, so it must be good, and lo and behold, it is. It is a story of just tragic proportions um, of this Thatcher-era Scottish family that is torn apart uh, by a worthless pile of crap philandering taxicab driver man who leaves the family because he can't handle his beautiful, wonderful, tragic... Um, self-destructive alcoholic uh, Agnes Bain who <laughs> is the mother of Shuggy Bain uh, Big Shug being the father who abandons the family and leaves the family and then there are the other two kids who find ways to escape the self-destructive path of their mother who vacillates between sobriety and alcoholism and her alcoholism uh, and the worse things go for her the more she takes to drink and sneaks her drinks into her tea and into her handbag and here and there and everywhere uh, this story according to the acknowledgements and um, some interviews I've seen uh, is not autobiographical but in memory of his mother who did a uh, hello code name Camelot by David Archer. I've never read that book. <laughs> That's the advertisement. But uh, his mother did struggle with drink and he is also a gay man, uh, which Shuggy Bane, hello, open up, is a young boy who wants to be normal like other boys and struggles with that greatly as well. Um, and... Uh, it largely seems to focus on Agnes, and it should be called Agnes Bain, I think. Uh, but it, of course, it does follow Shuggy's struggle, too, because Shuggy has to take care of his mom because he's the only one there, and she is falling apart constantly. Um, and, you know, I believe the family gets social benefits, and she uses a lot of them, uh, a lot of that on her loggers and these kind of things, sort of a, you know, uh, Scotland at the time in the 80s having a serious drug problem, alcohol problem, even into the 90s, maybe even today, I don't really know, but uh, sort of a textbook case of a stupid Tory talking point, I guess, but, uh, you know, it, it's written in such a way that you just feel so much empathy for her and you want her to get better <laughs> so bad for her sake, for Shuggy's sake. And, you know, it, she just... <laughs> let me let me give you an example of uh, the teetering and tottering that goes on, uh, the sort of things that are at stake with... Um, this kind of character and Shaggy who takes care of her and learns her habits and learns when she's taken to drink a little too much uh, and this and that and has, has been learning how to take care of his mother in ways that no child should ever have to because he's quite young he doesn't get to go out and play the way he should he has to undress her and dress her and fix her up tea and, you know, do all kinds of things to help her, help her uh, manage herself. And because Agnes, um, despite all the things going wrong in her life, which causes her to take to drink more, she manages to maintain appearances and constantly tries to speak as if she's sober. Uh, and she's always got great makeup on, dresses very well, these kind of things. Uh, the appearance of Agnes is 
uh, you know, perfectly fine. The reality is devastating. And there is a scene early on with her and Shuggy, and this is quite early. Um, and this is a scene I meant to talk about before. That was the build-up. They're in her room, and she's she's had a couple. <laughs> um, and a fire starts, and the curtains are burning. And Shuggy's quite nervous about this, and Magnus is hugging him, holding him, sort of laughing about it, if I recall, and trying to enjoy herself, seeming to enjoy herself, and it's just like she's not safe for this poor kid. Um, she tries to be, she's supportive of her child, uh, definitely, she loves him, that much is true, she's just struggling greatly with this terrible addiction she has, um, and it's just a beautiful, beautiful portrayal of her and her struggle, and this sort of broken family on benefits and how difficult it was for, I guess, Douglas Stewart, in a way, but not, because uh, it's not autobiographical, as he says, um, but for families like this, and yeah, it's, it's an excellent book, so I recommend it, and I haven't read any of the other books that are up for the Booker Prize, but I do sort of hope it wins, <laughs> because I love it. So I'm going to have to thank Sean the Book Maniac for talking about it and putting it on my radar because uh, I would not have um, gotten it otherwise. Um, so there's that. Only thing I have to say is that, uh, I mean, it, it's, it's, it is Scottish as hell, uh, which is perfectly fine, but it can make it uh, kind of strange to read, uh, perfectly readable. Uh, but sometimes it's written with the accent, and I just think that's not, you know, you, do, you don't need to do that. I know it's in Scotland, so I can imagine the Scottish accent. As for the audiobook, um, I have a hard time with Scottish accents, but it was clean, it was clear. He had uh, great voices and uh, diction and, and emphasis on all kinds of things, and he really uh, brought the story to life. So that's all I have to say. Thank you. Bye.